कारवा मिनी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे चैप्टर फोर ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज दिस सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदान स्वामी प्रभुपाल आर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एंड द फाउंडर एंड आचार्य ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वाइड हरे कृष्णा मूवमेंट श्री भगवान वाचा इमं विवस्वते योगम प्रोक्तवान्हमव्यय विवस्वान्मन वे प्रा मनुर्क्षवाक वे ब्रवी द ब्लेसड लॉर्ड सेट आई इंस्ट्रक्टेड दिस इम्पेरिशेबल साइंस ऑफ योगा टू द सन गॉड विवस्वान एंड विवस्वान इंस्ट्रक्टेड इट टू मनु the father of mankind and manu in turn instructed it to ikshvaku evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu sakale neha mahata yogo nashtav parantapa The supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way but in course of time the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost so the concept that we discussed in the first chapter in the beginning it is again reiterated here this was the shloka that we had discussed evam parampara praptam before we even begin to understand or hear any spiritual subject matter it is very important to understand this principle the medicine should be taken as per the instructions on the label so here bhagavad gita is describing how this knowledge should be received krishna explains it is not that arjuna for the first time i am giving you this knowledge imam vivasvate yogam this knowledge of yoga connection of individual soul to the supreme soul this science of yoga i had spoken to vivaswan the sun god controller the predominating deity of sun planet and vivaswan spoke to manu his son manu spoke to his son ikshvaku in this way in this succession the knowledge came down evam parampara praptam many times people ask us so can you please explain what is your interpretation of bhagavad gita so we explain no we do not explain our interpretation we explain the meaning as it is people are very fond of interpreting the vedas and thus there is so much of chaos and confusion people ask just see this is bhagavad gita this has got one meaning another bhagavad gita another meaning everybody has given his or her own interpretation e is equal to mc square we have read in basic sciences now if somebody gives interpretation e means elephant m means monkey c means cat then what is the use then you have spoiled the formula you will not be able to arrive to any proper understanding you please ask from the person who has given the formula or in his succession his disciple his disciple in this way we can understand perfect meaning e is energy m is mass c is velocity of light and then you get perfect knowledge so actually how somebody can interpret you have to take it from the creator as it is the real meaning the moment you interpret it that means it is your understanding and what is the use of our understanding 7 billion people can have 7 billion interpretations so the correct meaning is understood from the creator from the original speaker the original speaker is lord krishna as we read in previous chapters 
ब्रह्म अक्षर समुद्भवम द वेदास हैव गॉट इट्स ओरिजिन इन द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड ब्रह्म अक्षर समुद्भवम इट इज नॉट क्रिएटेड बाई एनी ह्यूमन बींग सो फ्रॉम द क्रिएटर और इन क्रिएटर्स डिस्प्लिक सक्सेशन चेन ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर्स एंड डिसाइपल्स दिस नॉलेज कैन बी अंडरस्टैंड सो बिफोर वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस सब्जेक्ट मैटर फ्रॉम एनी बडी वी शुड काइंडली आस्क कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन वॉट इज योर परंपरा इन विच सक्सेशन डू यू बिलोंग अनफॉर्चुनेटली नाइंटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द वर्जन्स ऑफ भगवद गीता दैट वी हैव दे आर ऑल स्पॉइल्ड इंटरप्रिटेशन of course we have many in the sanskrit language but that is not widely known now there are sanskrit commentaries right explanations by sridhar swami by sri chaitanya mahaprabhu baldev vidya bhushan jeev goswami but unfortunately people are uh, shri pad ramanujacharya and in all these different bona fide explanations you will not find any contradiction the moment there is contradiction it means one of them is wrong so thus we should be careful otherwise we will be spending lot of time instead of coming to right conclusion we may end up having a wrong understanding of god sa evayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratanah bhakto si me sakha cheti rahasyam he tad uttamam that very ancient science of the relationship with the supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend therefore you can understand the transcendental mystery of this science so krishna gives here the qualification of understanding bhagavad gita krishna is not telling a karmi can understand or a gyani can understand or ashtang yogi can understand krishna is telling भक्तो असी में सखा चेती यू आर माई भक्ता माई डिवोटी एंड माई फ्रेंड सो रहस्यम आई एम स्पीकिंग टू यू दिस ग्रेट सीक्रेट बिकॉज ओनली अ डिवोटी कैन अंडरस्टैंड अ लवर ऑफ गॉड हु हैज़ गॉट रिलेशनशिप कैन अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो अबाउट अ पर्सन देन वी हैव टू हैव रिलेशनशिप विद दैट पर्सन सो दस भगवद गीता इज द साइंस ऑफ गॉड एंड the infinitesimal living entities who are part and parcels of god their relationship so a person has to have he must have a relationship then one can understand this mystery otherwise if there is no devotion if there is no relationship a person can become well versed in memorizing all the vedas he can argue philosophically but he will not be able to get the mystery of the secret अर्जुन उवाच अपरंभवतो जन्म परम जन्म विवस्वत कथमेतजानीयाम आद प्रोक्तवानी अर्जुन सेड द सन गॉड विवस्वानी सीनियर बाय बर्थ टू यू हाउ एम आई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन द बिगनिंग यू इंस्ट्रक्टेड दिस साइंस टू हिम so this is very interesting question krishna explains i spoke this to sun god now sun planet is very old so how old would be the predominating deity controller of sun so arjuna and krishna were contemporaries they were friends and also they were cousins and arjuna is telling how to understand that you spoke to sun god it is just like if any person to details now i'm speaking to you this knowledge which i spoke to abraham lincoln or which i spoke to alexander so one may ask oh alexander came long ago and how come you were living that time same question arjuna is asking that we are contemporaries krishna param janma vivaspata vivaswan the sun god is very very old so how could you speak knowledge to him now krishna gives how is it possible that krishna has spoken this knowledge to sun god श्री भगवाच बहूनी मे व्यतीता जन्म तव चाजुन तान्यहम वेद सर्वाणी 
Natvam Vetha Parantapa. The Blessed Lord said, Many, many births both you and I have passed. I can remember all of them, but you cannot, O subduer of the enemy. This is the difference between Jiva, the infinitesimal spark, small living entity, all of us, and God. We keep on changing our bodies, like dresses we have seen in the second chapter. But as soon as we change the body, we forget everything of the past life. As we enter into a dream body, we forget what is happening with this body, situation of this body. And when we come out of the dream, we forget uh, what has happened to the dream, in the dream. If you wake up in the middle, sometimes we do remember. In a similar fashion, with the change of bodies, we keep on forgetting all our relationships. So every life is compared to a dream. Dream, it appears to be real. We are talking to people who appear to be real, but everything dissolves when we wake up. Similarly, now we are talking to some people. We may become very rich, affluent, or we may remain poor and not very well known, but it does not matter because all the, this thing is going to vanish as soon as we leave this body. Thus, this life is just like a dream. So this body exists, this temporary covering upon us, but in effect, it is just like a dream, a reality which is temporary. As soon as we give up body, everything is forgotten. In previous life, we had parents, children, relatives, friends, enemies, we have forgotten all of them. We were criticized, we were blasphemed, we have forgotten all of it. But Krishna does not forget because he does not change the body as we have discussed. Dehi Dehavi Bhedoyam Neshware Vidyate Kvachit There is no difference between the body and soul of Krishna. Krishna retains the same body, thus he does not forget. So it is not that Krishna was an ordinary human being as some people tell. And uh, he was praised so much that people started believing he is God. No, here he is explaining the position. He had perfect knowledge of spiritual life long, long ago and he spoke that knowledge to Vivaswan, who is millions of years elder to Arjuna. So thus Krishna now begins to reveal his personality, who is Krishna actually. He has given some hints in the previous chapters. Now again very clearly he will explain. Don't think I am an ordinary personality who is of the same age as you and taken birth along with you. Ajopi sannavyayatma bhutanam ishvaro pisan prakritim swamadhishthaya sambhavami atma mayaya Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although I am the Lord of all the sentient beings, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. So Krishna gives unique features of his personality. The first word Krishna uses here is Aja. Aja means I am unborn. Unborn takes birth. This is explained about Krishna in the prayers of Queen Kunti and in various places throughout the Vedic literatures. So people are confused why Krishna appears then. That Krishna explains uh, in the next two verses. Some people tell Krishna has appeared in order to relieve the burden of the miscreants. Others tell he appeared to Fulfill the wishes of his parents Vasudev and Devki who wanted to have God as their child. Other they tell he was simply pleased with the Yadu dynasty who were great devotees. In order to glorify the family, Krishna appeared over there. So like this, various people give various reasons for Krishna's appearance. But the most important thing to understand is Krishna does not take birth. Krishna is Aja, Krishna is unborn. And Avyayatma, another word which is important here is Krishna's body does not perish. So Krishna is having body which is eternal. There is no birth and there is no death. Bhutana Mishvaro Pisan Bhutana means the living entities or 
anything which is there in the material world all the material ingredients and krishna is telling ishwaraha everybody is ishwara we are ishwara means controller we can control this body we can control few people around us but here krishna is telling i am the controller of bhuta naam of all the created beings and the matter existing in this world i am the lord of all matter and the condition living entities here in this world prakritim swam adhishthaya sambhavami atma maya then how do we understand that krishna took birth we all know he appeared in a prison house of kansa and he appeared from the womb of devaki that is why krishna tells here we will see one who understands the nature of my birth and activities he will become liberated it is a great science we have studied the science of birth of common living entities like us male and female gametes fuse and emulsification happens embryo develops and then we know the sciences very nicely x chromosome y chromosome and so many things we have defined and this is how we take birth this is a science birth is a science similarly krishna's birth is also great science if we understand this science it does not have much impact in our life anyway male and female will be attracted to each other births will keep on happening but if we understand the science of appearance of krishna there will be no more miserable birth for us we will be liberated in our spiritual life so this science is very important to be understood and this science is explained in shrimad bhagavatam once we finish bhagavad gita we should aspire to reach shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita is abcd of spiritual life and bhagavatam is post graduate study so in shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned how krishna took birth krishna appeared in the heart of vasudev from the heart of vasudev krishna got transferred to the heart of devaki from there krishna entered the womb of devaki and then he came out in his four handed form narayan form having conch shell club discs all the ornaments dress in his body very nice helmet with grown up hairs in complete beauty and opulence because krishna wanted to show them that uh, if he appeared in two handed form they would have thought oh another ordinary baby has appeared like this have appeared before now krishna told i have come in this form because you prayed to me in this four handed form the see i am god i am having four hands and just to satisfy your desires i have appeared now and then devki request you please come in two handed form as an ordinary child so this is how krishna took birth it was not by any biological process but it was a spiritual process and we also have heard that krishna uh, also died how do we understand that the word used here is avyayatma so this is a drama just like we see on the theater drama happens and a person appears to be dead he is only acting he is lying still on the stage because it is a part of his or her role in a similar fashion krishna has created so many bodies krishna is a cause of maintenance of the bodies and krishna destroys also so many bodies so he can create and leave one more body what is the loss for krishna how is it difficult so krishna leaves one body which appears like the form of krishna in this world and people think oh krishna is dead no krishna is not dead he has left a form which appears exactly like his spiritual form to be foolish so krishna is very very kind as we will see krishna tells ye yathamam prapadyante as people surrender unto me as they approach me so do i reciprocate so some people who want to become atheists they do not want to believe in god krishna creates such a situation that they have firm belief no krishna is not god see he also died and those who want to understand the science of krishna then krishna reveals that science also so if you want to become atheist krishna will give us logic how to become atheist if you want to understand god again krishna will guide krishna is a loving father who simply satisfies whatever desires we have but the important point is which desire is beneficial for us that also we need to understand from krishna and if we desire that then we will be happy so krishna is ajaha krishna is avyayatma krishna is eternal just like ordinary yogis also sometimes they can just become visible and they become invisible so when an ordinary yogi can do that why krishna yogeshwara cannot do that 
So Krishna does not take birth, Krishna appears. Thus we call appearance day of Krishna or disappearance day. We don't call birth and death. Now second line is also very important where Krishna mentions Prakritim Swam Adhishtaya. So there are two segments in the existence, Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha means the enjoyer, Prakriti means the enjoyed. Purusha means the energetic and Prakriti means the energy. Energy is controlled by the enjoyer for his pleasure. So Krishna has got, broadly speaking, two categories of energies, Prakriti. Antarang Prakriti, internal potency and external potency. So here Krishna is telling, Prakritim Swam Adhishthaya. Although this material world is separated energy of Krishna, and Krishna does not directly uh, see the events here. He has appointed various demigods and the topmost controlling deity is Durga of this material world. Where the living entities who want to compete with God, who want to enjoy independent of God, they are given residence here. But other living entities who simply want to serve God in loving relationship, for them there is another existence that is called Sanatan Dham or Vaikuntha Dham, the kingdom of God. And there Krishna maintains them in their own internal potency. How do we understand internal and external? Just like cow's blood is there, that is internal energy of cow and same blood is transformed into milk and the milk comes out of cow. So that milk is also energy of cow but it is separated now. In a similar fashion everything is energy of Krishna and when certain portion of energy is separated from Krishna where Krishna is not visible, for the living entities who want to enjoy independently, that is called external potency of Krishna. So all of us have taken these forms which are created by external potency, Durga. But Krishna is explaining, although I appear in this world, my appearance is not like ordinary living entities. I do not take any form created by external potency, but I exhibit myself in my internal potency, my personal energy that is called Prakritim Swam, Atma Maya, Maya again means energy, Atma Maya means my internal energy. I appear by my internal energy. We appear in this world, we are also spirit souls, but we appear by external energy. This uh, form is made of external energy. And if this form we leave, then we become invisible as spirit souls. Again, we take another form. But when Krishna comes here, Krishna's form is not made up of matter. Krishna's form is made up of spirit. There is no difference between Krishna and Krishna's form. It is complete spirit. That is what Krishna explains here. Because I do not take any material bodies, there is no question of birth and death for me. My form is completely made up of spirit. Now one may ask why Krishna appears. Krishna is the supreme controller. He is controlling everyone. What is the need of God to appear in this world? That Krishna answers now. Yada yada hi dharmasya Glanir bhavati bharata Abhyutthanam dharmasya Tadatmanam sirajamyaham Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice or descendant of Bharat and a predominant rise of irreligion. At that time, I descend myself. Paritranaya sadhunam Vinashaya chadushkritam Dharma sansthapanarthaya Sambhavami yuge yuge in order to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. So Krishna is explaining the reason for his appearance. Krishna explains, Dharma sansthapanarthai sambhavami yuge yuge Yada yada hi dharmasya glanair bhavati bharata Whenever there is decline in the religious practice in the dharma, I advent myself to re-establish the principles of dharma. 
So people want to understand everything from Bhagavad Gita. They want to understand how to increase productivity. They want to understand management skills. Some people understand chemistry and what not from Bhagavad Gita. But they don't want to understand from Bhagavad Gita the reason why Krishna spoke this Gita. And Krishna spoke this Gita to explain to us dharma. What is this dharma? Dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. The scientific codes given to us so that we can come back, revive our spiritual position, we can come back to spiritual status. That is called dharma. Now we are hallucinating that I am the body. And then we are getting carried away by the desires of the body which are not my desires. If I don't fulfill, I am frustrated. If I fulfill, still there is frustration because I am different from the body. There is no satisfaction. So unless person realizes I am not the body, person will keep on laughing, crying, aspiring in this hallucination. So to give this most important knowledge, as a person in dream is convinced he is the body of dream, similarly we are convinced that we are the body. But Krishna explains you are not the body. Why you are taking birth and dying? Understand this and follow this dharma in your life. So whenever there is decline in such religious practice, Krishna comes here. And unfortunately, many people in our country, they take advantage of the simplicity of the people and the piety of the people. People here, they have natural tendency of hearing about God, believing in God. So every other person has started claiming, I am also incarnation, I am incarnation, I am that God, I am Krishna, I have come again. As they say, India is a factory of producing gods. <laughs> in factory, they produce in bulk. So what is produced in bulk in India? So we may be lagging behind in uh, electronics and other gadgets, but we don't lag behind in most important produce and that is God. We produce God only directly. So this is a great cheating. Every other person is claiming, I am God. So we have to understand the scriptures, unfortunately, because there is no knowledge of the scriptures. So people believe also. So in order to understand who is God, we should go to the scriptures. Scriptures define who is God. When God is going to appear, Lord has got a scheduled time to appear. He does not appear. He can appear just like that, but he still follows the Vedic injunctions. He is free to come, but still he has a fixed time to come. And when Krishna would appear, that is already described. Krishna appears in the Dwapar Yuga of 27th Maha Yuga, of the 7th Manu. There are 14 Manus in one Kalpa, one day of Brahma. In this way, very precise date is given. At this time, Krishna is going to appear. Similarly, Lord Buddha is another incarnation. And if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, which was written 5000 years ago, Srimad Bhagavatam is predicting Buddhanam nanjana suto ki kateshu bhavishyati. A person by the Buddha will appear in this uh, Gaya province. Anjana suta, his mother's name will be Anjana. And like this very beautiful description is there. Muhyanti surat dvisham. He will uh, bewilder the atheistic people from the path of Vedas because people were killing animals viciously. And they were quoting Vedic authority in Vedas. It is, so Vedas don't recommend to kill animals, but people misunderstood it. So that is why the only solution was to make them atheist disbeliever of Veda so that they can stop this animal killing. Thus Krishna had to come. First he comes to establish the Vedas and then he comes to again remove Vedic authority. So all these are various wonderful activities of Krishna. And then there is prediction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Pornamasyam Fagunasya Faguni Raksha Yogataha. Exact date is also mentioned. On this day of the month, in this season, Lord Chaitanya will appear. Maya Pure Navadvipe Swarnadi Tiram Asthaya. He will appear in a place which is Mayapur Navadvip and on the bank of the river Ganges. Shachi Garbhe Purandarat. His mother's name will be Shachi. Father's name will be Purandar Mishra. So mother's name is mentioned, father's name is mentioned on the bank of Ganges, Navadvip. On this day of this month, everything is very beautifully mentioned. Bhakti Yoga Pradhanaya Lokas Anugrahaya Out of great mercy for people, he will spread Bhakti Yoga. 
sanyas roopam asthaya krishna chaitanya nama dhrik he will take sanyas and after sanyas his name would be krishna chaitanya how beautifully in great detail it is mentioned in the vedas this is called vedic knowledge perfect explanation of past and perfect prediction of future also so god's appearance father's name of god mother's name of god the place of appearance activities everything is very beautifully and exactly defined in the vedas so if anybody tells i am god we should ask vedic reference otherwise we cannot believe on anybody and apart from this they have some special symbols on the soles of their feet so there are uh, very unique signs like fish flag and uh, conch like this so many symbols are there on the feet of krishna or the incarnations so if anybody claims i am incarnation you please check his soles are there some special signs all these nice vedic descriptions are there and then they should perform some extraordinary activity krishna lifted mountain govardhan krishna danced on the hood of very huge snake which was having many many hoods so can you dance on the hood of a simple python no and you are claiming that you are god can you lift even a small stone of 50 kg and krishna lifted such a big mountain like this so many extraordinary activities krishna did lord ram chandra did what have you done so we should not get carried away by such claim of incarnations we should understand from the vedas what are the incarnations what is their father's name mother's name then there will be no confusion and no cheating and unfortunately this so called incarnations they give the teachings which are contradictory to the instructions in bhagavad gita they take advantage because nobody reads gita now let me speak anything so krishna does not tell i spoke some knowledge to vivaswan now it is revised edited and enlarged edition i am speaking to you no knowledge is always perfect same knowledge krishna tells sa evayam maya te adhya now i am going to speak to you because the original knowledge got lost so interpretations came up even during arjuna's time bhagavad gita was present but wrong interpretations came up so krishna wanted to reestablish so that is why krishna is telling today original meaning i am going to establish again by speaking to you so we should not get cheated we should read the vedas bhagavad gita then we will understand who is god who is incarnation जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं यो वेति तत्वतेहम पुनर्जन्म नैति मेति सोर्जुन दिस इज वॉट वी डिस्कस कृष्ण एक्सप्लेन्स वन नोज अ ट्रांसेंडेंटल नेचर ऑफ माई अपियरेंस एंड एक्टिविटीज डज नॉट अपॉन लिविंग द बॉडी टेक इज बर्थ अगेन इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड but attains my eternal abode o arjuna so divya means transcendental as we discussed krishna does not come by material biological process but he appears by transcendental mechanism which means divya janma karma ch me divyam our activities are strictly controlled by rajoguna satvaguna tamaguna there are three energies which control everything whatever is happening in this material world but krishna is not controlled by the three energies krishna is divya means beyond the three energies completely spiritual so krishna's activities are not controlled by nature krishna's activities are completely conducted in his own energy spiritual energy janm and karm both एवं योवेति तत्वता इफ अ पर्सन साइंटिफिकली तत्वता इन ट्रुथ इज एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड देन त्यक्वा देहम आफ्टर लिविंग दिस बॉडी पुनर्जन्म नायती देर इज नो मोर रिपीटेड बर्थ ओ सो डज इट मीन इट इज सुसाइडल टू अंडरस्टैंड द साइंस ऑफ कृष्णा इज बर्थ एंड एक्टिविटीज आई विल नॉट एग्जिस्ट एंजॉय एनी मोर नो कृष्णा इज टेलिंग त्यक्वा जन्म त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नायती ही डज नॉट टेक एनी मोर बर्थ बट mamiti he comes to me comes to live with me so the spirit soul as long as it is present in this body it develops a material form upon itself just like when we go to some other planet which is not favorable for our life sustenance then we take up a space suit in a similar fashion the living entity which is completely spiritual if it is not in the spiritual atmosphere vakuntha 
Sanatan Dham. If it is there in the material world, it takes up this external dress. But when it is established in the spiritual place where Krishna lives, then it manifests into a spiritual form without any external dress. So Krishna tells Mam Eti, no, don't think you will die. All your senses will be there. You can see, you can talk, you can walk, you can laugh. But all these activities will be conducted in your spiritual body, which you develop when Mam Eti, when you come to me. So next question can be how we can understand or oh, let me understand then I have studied so much of science. Let me understand the Divya science, transcendental science also so that I can stop this repeated birth and death, enjoy my permanent life with Krishna. So how we can do that? Krishna explains, gives a hint. Vitaraga bhaya krodha manmaya mamupashrita Bahavogyana tapasa Uta madbhava magata Bhavam means nature. Swabhav means one's own nature. Madbhavam means Krishna's nature. So one attains Krishna's nature. Krishna's body is Satchidananda, full of all knowledge, full of eternity. There is no death and full of bliss. We also attain a body which is eternal, having complete knowledge and bliss. And Madhbhava means Krishna's spiritual abode, which is of the same nature as that of Krishna, which is eternal, which is not destroyed, full of knowledge and bliss. So Madhbhava Magata means we attain the spiritual nature. We attain body or Krishna's nature. And Madhbhava also means, Bhava means emotional love. That is a perfection of spiritual life. So how one can attain Krishna's abode or love for Krishna? It is one and the same thing. Only those people who develop this very strong love for Krishna, they transfer themselves to the abode of Krishna. So how this platform is attained? Krishna's planet or love for Krishna? Vitraga bhaya krodha. One has to become free from rag, bhaya and krodha. Rag means attachment. So we are very much attached to this material world and in this attachment as a child if he is very much attached to play sports or games he will not be interested in studies. If he is very much interested in virtual reality he might take less interest in reality. In a similar fashion if we are very much attached to this material world it is not possible for us to take interest in spiritual life. So one has to become free from the material attachment, rag. So some people are there who are disgusted with material life. After so many attempts to enjoy, they understand there is only frustration in them what we get. There is no satisfaction. Even though I am a perfectly successful person as per the definition of this world, but that success does not satisfy me. Then they become fearful of this material existence. And then they don't want to continue. They want moksha. Moksha means they want to merge into the spiritual energy of Krishna. So one has to become free from this fear also if a person has to go to Krishna. So if you want to merge into the energy of Krishna or Krishna's body, Krishna can appear, can accept that. And okay, you come and merge as a small spark in the spiritual energy. But that position will not satisfy us because we are part and parcel of Krishna, children of Krishna. We have the same nature as that of Krishna. Krishna has given us senses because we have tendency of enjoying our senses. But the problem is we are enjoying in this material world. Example in the Vedas given us, if a person is sick, now if you tell a sick person uh, to eat food, he will vomit. He has no taste for food. He cannot digest. So, and if you tell, let us go and play football, he cannot play. He cannot even walk. He is always lying in the bed. So to a sick man, if you tell him, if you become fit, then we will run around in the field, we will play, we will do sporting and we will eat so many nice things. For him, running around means miserable activity. He cannot do that. Eating means very bitter. He feels like puking out. So it is, no, 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 then I don't want to become fit. I have to eat. No eating in sickness is miserable, but eating in a healthy life is very desirable. 
Similarly, existence is not bad, but existence in material world is full of frustration, dissatisfaction, and anxieties. But some people who are not having knowledge or spiritual abode. kingdom of god they think this material world is all in all everywhere there is birth and death just like if a person is born in hiroshima nagasaki where there is so much of uh, nuclear radiation every person would be born crippled and some people who are born diseased like the uh, most famous scientist of our times he attempted many suicides because of some disease which he acquired if a person thinks oh birth here means disease i don't want to live don't want to no you are born in a wrong place so we should not understand every planet has got same life as we have on this planet there are many planets vedas describe where living standard is much better than that of earth planet and there are planets where life itself is eternal where there is no problem at all so we should not desire simply merging into jyoti brahma jyoti or moksha spiritual life is beyond moksha that is why it is told bhakti moksha laghut krit moksha means simply coming out of jail freedom but unless a person goes and meets with his family and starts positive life then a person may feel oh, in jail at least i had few friends let me go back again to the jail so thus moksha will not satisfy us bhakti loving service of krishna moksha laghut krit it makes moksha insignificant mukti mukulitanjali sevate asman so Uh, for the devotees mukti it's standing with folded hands please accept me in your service but bhakta devotee is already liberated he is not at all affected by any energies disturbance of this material world so mukti is always ready with folded hands to uh, it is praying to devotee please accept me in your service but devotee does not uh, bother he is already liberated so one should be free from material attachment one should be free from existence of personality and one should be free from krodha anger also some people get completely bewildered by different philosophies what is right this philosophy is correct that philosophy is correct this philosophy tells world is coming from a person this philosophy is telling world is coming from energy this philosophy is telling x y z and they get so totally confused they tell nobody knows anything and everything is zero everything is void there is no purpose there is no controller and such people either they become voidist or these people they take to intoxicants and they become very tamasic so one should avoid all these things one should avoid attachment to material world one should avoid fear of spiritual life one should avoid anger resulting from confusion in understanding what is reality of life when a person is free from राग भया क्रोधा अटैचमेंट फियर एंड एंगर देन अ पर्सन कैन अंडरस्टैंड नॉलेज बहवो ज्ञान तपसा पूता मत भाव मागता सो हाउ अ पर्सन कैन बिकम फ्री फ्रॉम दीज थिंग्स मन मया माम उपाश्रिता बाय टेकिंग शेल्टर ऑफ कृष्णा मन मया मन मया मीन्स मत मया मत मीन्स मी मया मीन्स फुल ऑफ If something is swarn maya means it is covered in gold. Mat maya means a person is completely absorbed in Krishna. So when a person is completely absorbed in Krishna and maam upashrita ha, when one takes shelter of Krishna, bahvo gyan tapasa puta, then one becomes purified by virtue of gyan and tapasa, knowledge and austerity. So knowledge is very important. When a person has knowledge, what? is the aim of this life then a person automatically takes up all the discomforts which are called tapaha tapasya human life is meant for tapasya the scriptures mention voluntarily acceptance of discomforts we need to have such tapasya for any material achievement also voluntarily accepting of discomfort is very important so scientific discomforts have to be taken for advancement in the knowledge of spiritual life so when people have spiritual knowledge and they do tapasya when they are completely absorbed in krishna and they take shelter of krishna then they become free from rag bhaya and krodha and then they are able to understand the science of birth and activities of krishna and they are able to go to krishna
ये यथा माम प्रपद्यंते तथा भजाम्यहम मम वर्तमानुवर्तंते मनुष्या पार्थ सर्वशः All of them as they surrender unto me I reward accordingly everyone follows my path in all respects o son of pritha everybody has to do prapadyante surrender to krishna but in which way a person is surrendering that defines the reciprocation of krishna and the result that the living entity is going to attain There are some people who directly surrender to Krishna they are called spiritualists and some people indirectly surrender to Krishna they are called materialist What is the meaning of this direct and indirect surrender just like most of us we are law abiding citizens we directly follow the instructions rules and regulations of government those people who disobey they are put into jail in jail also they have to surrender to government only but such surrender is not very pleasant and it restricts their enjoyment and freedom so everyone has to surrender to god if we don't follow the gods of lord very nicely then we are given birth in this material world and then birth death old age disease hard work anxiety lamentation all these things follow us and our life becomes very very miserable so in jail also there are some pleasures in jail also people play some sports they play cricket they play badminton they get sometimes some newspapers sometimes there is feast also in jail and if a person thinks oh this life is very nice and is foolish he does not know what does he deserve in a similar fashion if somebody is satisfied with whatever little happiness he gets in this world full of miseries that is not intelligence but still ye yathamam prapadyante as a person if a person wants to remain in material world i guide him okay you remain in material world and if a person wants to advance in spiritual life then again i guide but everyone mam vartamanu vartante everyone follows my path everyone follows the dictates of krishna and everybody is approaching krishna only materialist does not know that i want krishna and the spiritualist know what i want is actually krishna in my life now among the spiritualists also there are three categories there are gyanis yogis and bhaktas so they are attracted to different aspects of the absolute truth vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj gyanam advayam they are all called tatva vidha the knowers of absolute truth they are not attracted by the false presentation of material world they are attracted towards truth but the truth is understood in three phases which are these three phases they are called brahma parmatma and bhagwan there is no difference at all it is advaya gyan it is one and the same thing brahma parmatma and bhagwan but it depends upon the perspective the outlook of the transcendentalist the example given in the shastras is that of mountain if we see mountain from a distance it appears hazy like a cloud we are seeing mountain only and if you ask what is mountain like you will tell oh, it is just like a cloud this is called brahma aspect of krishna krishna is spread everywhere in the form of his energy just like the sun is spread everywhere in the form of sunlight but if a person thinks sun means only light that is ignorance sun means sun globe and the light which is emanating it is also part of sun but still sun planet is different one cannot tell sun means only sunlight sunlight is also sun but sun is not just sunlight in a similar fashion the cloud like appearance of mountain he is seeing mountain only but that is not the complete vision of the mountain then the yogis they want to realize the personality of godhead's form which is present in all the hearts they want to realize the presence of god within the heart just like we can uh, realize the presence of sun if we go out If you are just looking from the window we might see only sunlight if we little go out we might see sun in the sky and uh, although sun has not come to our place but still we can see sun from our place in a similar fashion although the god is situated far far 
away in his own abode still god is reflected he is present in all of our hearts in this material world so when a person is able to realize the presence of god in the heart it is like approaching closer to the mountain a person can see clear boundary of the mountains and uh, a person can see some trees over there and when a person advances further then he is able to see oh there are so many species there is so much life here there are animals there are human beings there are societies there are huts houses and in this way he realizes the exact understanding of the mountain so all the three cases the description of mountain is correct mountain is also like a cloud from a distance mountain is having some clear boundary uh and mountain is also having so many living entities all these descriptions are correct in a similar fashion god is present in our heart that is correct god is present everywhere as in energy that is correct but the perfect understanding of god is that this uh, god who is reflected in our hearts and who is present everywhere these aspects of god are dependent upon his personality aspect personal aspect and that is called bhagwan person who is full of six opulences so if a person wants to get merged into the jyoti of krishna krishna will guide accordingly tam sath hai bhajam me hum if a person wants to realize the presence of krishna within the heart wants to merge into the body of krishna krishna will sanction that also and if somebody wants to become a devotee engage in personal loving relationship with krishna krishna will guide him accordingly whatever we desire krishna reciprocates but we need to know what is best desire for us that krishna has revealed in the past and krishna will even more directly and clearly explain as the chapters progress kaankshata karmanam siddhim yajanta iha devata shep ब्रह्मुषे लोके सिद्धिर्भवति कर्मजा मेन इन दिस वर्ल्ड डिजायर सक्सेस इन फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज एंड देर फोर दे वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स क्विकली ऑफ कोर्स मैन गेट रिजल्ट फ्रॉम द फ्रूटिव वर्क इन दिस वर्ल्ड द पीपल वॉन्ट इमीडिएट सल्यूशन आई एम सिक प्लीज पुट वेट टॉवल ऑन माई हेड यू मे गेट इमीडिएट रिलीफ and if you take medicine take the pain of approaching a doctor then you will get permanent relief but people don't want to follow the permanent solution so thus they approach devatas and krishna is telling here shipram hi manushay loke siddhir they get immediate result if you worship any devi devata here demi gods goddesses you get quick results so thus people desist following krishna consciousness because the results permanent results may take more time and they want immediate results thus krishna is telling mainly people they approach demigods here for quick fulfillment of their desires chatur varnyam maya srishtam guna karma vibhag shah tasya kartaram api maam vidhi akartaram avyayam according to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them the four divisions of human society were created by me and although i am the creator of the system you should know that i am yet the non doer being unchangeable democracy was conceived by somebody communism was conceived by somebody capitalism was conceived by somebody who has conceived this varnashrama chatur varnyam who has conceived brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra why these divisions are there in the society one may ask and uh, various ideologies various yoga systems they have their origins in some sages or the incarnations of lord lord kapila explained the system of sankhya yoga later another imposter kapila propounded similar philosophy then yog sutras are given by patanjali there is karma mimamsa by jemini there is vedanta philosophy by vedavyas there are various 
న్యాయ లాజిక్ టీచర్స్ ఆల్సో అండ్ దే ఆర్ లెడ్ బై కనాడ్ అండ్ గౌతమ్ బట్ హూ హెస్ క్రియేటెడ్ దిస్ ఫిలాసఫీ దిస్ వే ఆఫ్ లివింగ్ ఆఫ్ వర్ణాశ్రమ సిస్టమ్ విచ్ ఇస్ ప్రాక్టిస్ బై సో మెనీ పీపుల్ అండ్ ద రెమినెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ పర్వర్టెడ్ ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ ఇన్ ద ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ కార్డ్ సిస్టమ్ ఇస్ స్టిల్ ప్రెవెల్ ఇన్ టుడే హూ హెస్ క్రియేటెడ్ దిస్ సిస్టమ్ why nobody is claiming that i have created why in history we don't find anything yes we will not find because it is coming from god from the beginning of creation chatur varnya maya srishtam so what is the basis the basis the aim is understanding the purpose of this existence the purpose is asatoma satgamay tamsoma jyotirgamaya satvagun rajagun and tamagun these three energies as we discuss control all of us those living entities who are predominantly in tamoguna mode of ignorance are called shudras those who are having mix of rajoguna and tamoguna they are called vaishya or productive class shudra means working class then those who are having predominantly mode of passion rajoguna they are called kshatriyas the warrior or administrative class and those who are in sattva guna they are called brahmanas the priestly class or the educators so everybody is encouraged to become brahmana because brahma janati iti brahmana spiritual realization is the aim of life and unless a person becomes brahmana he becomes very sattvic there is no question of coming to spiritual platform and there is no question of understanding god but it takes a long time usually so over many many lifetimes when a person follows the rules and regulations nicely gradually from shudra they can uh, eventually get the body of a brahmana if somebody is serious they can execute in the same life also and they are encouraged to do so but may not be easy so this caste system what we see today this is not the varnashrama system as we have discussed before also krishna has mentioned clearly gun karma vibhagashah as per the qualities and as per actions if anybody now also we see in society divisions are there divisions are required somebody is engineer doctor somebody is a defense personnel basis their qualification and their actions similarly if a person is having qualifications of mind control sense control always trustful always clean very forgiving having great knowledge of the vedas such a person is called brahmana if a person is having great chivalrous skills administrative skills then such a person is called a kshatriya some people who have got uh, the tendency to produce food grains and do business productive class make money they are called vaishyas some people who are simply satisfied doing the job they are called shudras so divisions are basis qualities and actions so it is unfortunate perverted system what we see today it was never basis hereditary caste it was basis guna and karma qualities and actions and as per these varnas they are supposed to follow the ashramas the shudra does not have much qualification so for him only grahastha ashram is recommended vaishya is more qualified for him brahmacharya ashram is also required vaishya should go to schools and take education shudras are not interested in taking education and if at all they take them they misuse the education thus schools are not meant for shudras just like now it is happening people are shudras and they take education they commit big big blunders and scams and the whole humanity suffers so if a shudra is given education disaster he will create big scams and all these things will happen so shudra just uh, they are allowed to have grahastha ashram no education vaishya uh business class mercantile community they go to schools gurukul and then they are allowed to go till grahastha ashram kshatriya they are allowed to go and recommended to go till vanaprastha ashram and only brahmana is allowed to take sanyas perfect renunciation detachment from material world others even though they get little dissatisfied with material world renunciation is not allowed because the nature of the body will not allow them to continue like that so thus it is a very very scientific system for gradual promotion to that of gross ignorance to platform of complete knowledge and eventually developing love for god 
न मां कर्माणि लिंपन्ति न मे कर्म फले स्पृहा इति मां यो भिजानाति कर्म भिर न सबध्यते देयर इज नो वर्क दैट अफेक्ट्स मी नॉर डू आई एस्पायर फॉर द फ्रूट्स ऑफ एक्शन वन हु अंडरस्टैंड्स दिस ट्रुथ अबाउट मी आल्सो डज नॉट बिकम एंटैंगल्ड इन द फ्रूटिव रिएक्शंस ऑफ वर्क सो वन शुड नॉट फॉल फॉर some criticism of krishna that krishna did so much of violence uh, as some people some philosophies they tell that krishna yes he was a good man we will worship him once he becomes purified now krishna is suffering for his misdeeds in hell once he comes out then we will worship him again so he was made to suffer this punishment because he was the cause of this great battle of kurukshetra so these are ignorant people we have to understand here krishna declares nam am karmani limpanti there is no work that affects me nor do i aspire for the fruits of the activities and one who knows that krishna is not at all affected by any activities he also does not get affected by activities he becomes liberated iti mam yo bhi janati karma bhir na sabadhyate he is also not bound by any actions and karma he is liberated anybody who can understand krishna is liberated he also will become liberated कर्म पूर्वरपी मुक्षु कुरु कर्म तस्मा पूर्व पूर्वतर कृत ऑल द लिबरेटेड सोल्स इन एंशियन टाइम्स एक्टेड विद दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड सो अटेन लिबरेशन देर फोर एज अ एंशियंट्स यू शुड परफॉर्म योर ड्यूटी इन दिस डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस किं कर्म किम कर्मेति कवियोप्यत्र मोहिता तत्ते कर्म प्रवक्ष्यामि यज ज्ञात्वा मोक्षसे शुभात इवन द इंटेलिजेंट आर बिवल्डर्ड इन डिटरमाइनिंग व्हाट इज एक्शन एंड व्हाट इज इन एक्शन नाउ आई शैल एक्सप्लेन टू यू व्हाट एक्शन इज नोइंग व्हिच यू शैल बी लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम ऑल सिन्स कर्मणो हि बोधव्य बोधव्य विकर्मण अकर्मण बोधव्य गहना कर्मणो गति द इंट्रिकसीज ऑफ एक्शन आर वेरी हार्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड देर फोर वन शुड नो प्रॉपरली वॉट एक्शन इज वॉट फबिड इन एक्शन इज एंड वॉट इन एक्शन इज सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कृष्ण इज एक्सप्लेनिंग कर्मणो हि अपि बोधव्यम बोधव्यम च विकर्मण देयर आर थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ एक्शंस कर्मा मींस एक्टिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्क्रिप्चरल इंजंक्शंस विकर्मा मींस ब्रेकिंग द स्क्रिप्चरल इंजंक्शंस एक्टिंग विम्सिकली जस्ट लाइक नाउ गवर्नमेंट हैज सो मेनी रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस इफ यू ब्रेक देम दैट इज कॉल्ड सिन क्राइम दैट टेक्निकली एज पर वैदिक नॉलेज इज कॉल्ड विकर्मा and then there is third category of action which is called akarma akarma means activity on spiritual platform which does not even the person is acting but it will not result in material reaction it will bring spiritual results karmanya karma yav pashyed akarmani cha karmayah sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta kritsna karma krit So unfortunately people do not know this Krishna is telling it is very complex to understand gahana karmano gatihi what is karma what is akarma people do not know that uh, if somebody jumps the speed limit he will be fine for it but it is his duty to know what is the speed limit on this road in a similar fashion there are various laws because we do not know we break the laws and we suffer breaking the laws of nature is the only cause of our all our sufferings so krishna tells it is very important to know what is karma what is vikarma and most important it is to understand what is akarma akarma means inaction and here very beautiful shloka this is krishna mentions one who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position although engaged 
in all sorts of activities. So Krishna explains who is the person who is actually liberated, one who can see in action in action. So the materialist may be performing so many activities, but a wise person, a transcendentalist understands it is actually inaction. Inaction means this activity is not going to have any result. If a person works very hard to make a sand castle, that is waste of time because that castle is not going to remain. One strong wave will come that will be washed away and all that effort is null and void finished. In a similar fashion, everybody is working very hard, taking great stress, tension, anxiety. And as soon as they leave the body, their name, fame, education, family members, everybody is gone. So all those activities, so much hard work for caring for the family members, seeing that they are always satisfied, always happy, it is useless waste of time if we do not take them to spiritual emancipation. Because they will again suffer, they will die in the next life, they will suffer. So you worked so hard to take care, take care of few people, your near and dear ones and yourself. We will also suffer if we come again in this material world, our families will suffer. Name, fame, education, everything is gone. So thus it is called inaction. A spiritualist sees no worth in material activities performed for temporary sense enjoyment. Is it not useless waste of time? Because of lack of knowledge of this eternal aspect of ourselves, we are engaged in this inaction. So Krishna tells we have to see inaction in action. People are very very active, one should see just like monkeys are very active jumping from one tree to another, dogs are active scavenging from this dustbin to another. No worthy activity. And a devotee, a spiritualist also can be doing activity. And his activities also are not to be seen any activity. They are also called inaction. Why? Because they don't produce any material reaction. So it is as good as not acting at all. Because a devotee does all the activities only under direction of Krishna, his activity is on spiritual platform, conducted by spiritual energy. Although a devotee may also be doing a business earning money, just like Arjuna is also acting like a warrior of Rajaguna mode of passion, fighting so that he can rule the kingdom. But Arjuna is not conducted by material energy, but directly by Krishna's instruction, spiritual energy. So thus, although Arjuna is doing activity, apparently in the mode of passion, killing, fighting wars, but actually he will not get any reaction of the mode of passion. So thus, this is called seeing inaction in action. At the same time, a wise man also sees action in inaction. Sometimes a materialist does not act, just like Arjuna did not want to act, did not want to fight, but there is action in this inaction. What is action? As Krishna explained, inaction is sin. By not doing your activity, you are doing breach of the laws of nature and you are creating material punishment for yourself. Thus, because you are creating a material reaction, suffering, inactivity is also considered activity because it is producing material result. And sometimes a devotee can also be inactive. Devotee can be simply chanting entire day, he can be simply worshipping the deity or meditating upon the form of Krishna, apparently he is not doing anything. But he is absorbed in Samadhi Krishna's service. So even though devotee is not acting, one should see that this is real activity because he is making spiritual advancement. Simply sitting and observing the form of Krishna in the temple or within the heart, thinking about Krishna, reading Bhagavad Gita, contemplating upon Krishna's forms, activities, or simply chanting and hearing his names 24 hours a day. Some devotees do that. And one can tell, oh, he's inactive, sitting entire day doing nothing. No, he is doing real activity because he is advancing, he is creating his spiritual life. So this is the vision. Action in inaction and seeing inaction in action. One who sees like this, he is a wise man. So one should learn to see in this way. Yasya sarve samarambha kama sankalp varjita jnana agni dagdh karmanam tam ahuv panditam budha 
So Krishna gives further description of one who is free from all the actions and reactions of this material world liberated personality. One is understood to be in full knowledge whose every act is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker whose fruitive action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. He does not do any activity for sense gratification. Kama sankalpa varjita. He does all the activities only for the pleasure of Krishna's senses. We do all activities for our sense enjoyment. So thus we are conditioned living entities. Liberated means he will only desire Krishna's enjoyment. Kama sankalpa varjita. Tyatva karma phalasangam nitya tripto nirashraya. Karmanya bhipya vritto pi naiva kinchit karoti saha. Abandoning all attachment to the results of his activities, ever satisfied and independent, he performs no fruitive action, although engaged in all kinds of undertakings. Karma phala sangam, again Krishna is repeating many times over and over. Karma phal Asangam, one should not be attached to the results of one's activities because they should be offered in sacrifice for the pleasure of Krishna. We are very much attached, we just are result oriented, we want to enjoy the result. This is wrong, this is not the right activity described by Krishna. One should be detached from the results to offer it to Krishna. Nitya Tripta, always satisfied. We are taught to always remain dissatisfied. We think when we are dissatisfied, then we will make material advancement and that is something very good. That is inaction Krishna described in previous verse. So one should be nitya tripta, one should always be satisfied. In all circumstances, this is the art that we have to learn. And nirashraya, one should be completely independent. So in Vedic culture, anybody who takes education, they, they were nirashraya. They were not taking shelter of anybody else for maintenance. Only those people who were not going to schools, they would undertake jobs. So that is why it is told today's education system, it is following the footsteps of dogs. A dog, if it is not having a master, its life is very miserable. People throw stones. Anybody just chases it for no reason and he does not get food, although all the species get food. Dog's destiny is so that unless he gets a master, it is very difficult. It will always cry, that is why they howl in the night because they are very hungry. Anytime you give food to the street dog, they are always eager to take it. So unless they have master, dog's life is very miserable. Similarly, today's education system makes us like dogs, unfortunately. That is what the Vedas are telling. So after uh, clearing all the big examinations, if a person does not get job, then their life is useless, all education is useless. But Vedic education means anybody who has passed out from Vedic school, they will never take up jobs. The first class pass outs are Brahmanas. Brahmana means Patan Patan Yajan Yajan. He is so much Nitya Tripta, so much satisfied, so much dependent on God, so much senses are controlled that he does not want to take any money even for tomorrow. He just needs that day's maintenance. And uh, then Kshatriyas, they are also not taking up any jobs. Brahmana will simply educate free of cost and whatever arms the students will bring, he will be satisfied with that. And if there is excess, he will give charity. He does not take any money for education. So he is not doing any job. Kshatri also does not do any job, they give protection, administration and they collect taxes. Vaishyas do not do any jobs, they will cultivate their own field, whatever they require they will produce in the field. They are also independent. Only Shudras they do jobs, they are dependent on other living entities. So education means ya vidya sa vimuktaye, that which liberates you, that is education. What is this education that you are very eager to take up jobs? Human life is meant for liberation, always remaining satisfied, becoming independent. These are the features of transcendentalists. Nirashiryat chittatma tyakta sarva parigraha shariram kevalam karma kurvan apnoti kilbisham. 
such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life thus working he is not affected by sinful reactions so very important word used here is shariram kevalam karma nirashir he does not want to enjoy the results of activities and he is uh, having perfect control of chittatma mind and senses and shariram kevalam karma he lives works only to keep the body and soul together shariram kevalam karma and actually if we go for even gross material enjoyment any more than keeping body and soul together it only results in misery the example given is that of salt salt is required a bit of it a pinch of it to make the meal tasty now if somebody applies logic oh if a pinch of salt makes the dish so tasty let me put entire jar of salt into it and the dish will become much much more tastier that is foolishness that is not logic so people think oh i have uh, just smoked one cigarette let me smoke some more and i'll be happy i drank just a peg let me have little more i'll be more happy i've had little sex if i have unlimited sex i'll be unlimitedly happy this is as foolish as thinking if a pinch of salt makes food so tasty let me put entire jar of salt so sense gratification any more than a pinch of it which is required for keeping body and soul together it brings only misery in one's life it brings addiction to our life the thirst for sense enjoyment always keeps on increasing as we have discussed and the person becomes frustrated so this is very important please understand the wise person lives only for keeping body and soul together and do you find people in today's civilization who work just for keeping body and soul together entire civilization is lusty and greedy where is the question of satisfaction when the heart is full of lust and greed these are the real problems of life all the other problems are the expansions of lust and greed the result of lusty and greedy activity so there is no question of less food there is no question of overpopulation these are foolishness of ignorant souls we are so much lusty to drink tea coffee and smoke marijuana and so many things if we can control our senses just keep body and soul will the soul leave the body if we don't drink tea and coffee then why don't we grow cash crops so much land is there which is occupied by growing weeds by growing uh, other cash crops tea coffee etc and grains can be cultivated in that and there would be no food problem at all but no we want to enjoy and thus in all this artificial produce then we tell there is no land for cultivating food so actually the real problems of life are only lust and greed all the problems are the results of such lusty activities so shariram we should present this ideal in the society so if we scientifically follow the principles of bhagavad gita we will be able to come to that platform where we work only for keeping body and soul together tyakta sarva parigraha and uh, there would be more result from our activity but parigraha one is free from all the possessions one understands everything belongs to krishna so just one maintains body and soul together and offer the results to krishna yadrachha labh santushto द्वंद्वातीतो विमत्सर समिद्धिफाइड विद गेन विच कम्स ऑफ इट्स ओन अकॉर्ड हु इज फ्री फ्रॉम ड्यूएलिटी एंड डज नॉट एन वी हु इज स्टडी बोथ इन सक्सेस एंड फेलियर इज नेवर इन टैंगल्ड ऑल दो परफॉर्मिंग एक्शंस important word used here is dvandva tito ya dricha labh santushto one is satisfied with whatever comes whatever gains one gets of its own accord we are not satisfied with that we want more and more why because we are in dvandva we think something is good another thing is bad so heat is good 
Cold is bad or cold is good, heat is bad. One is free from this, profit is good, loss is bad. So for spiritual advancement, both things are good. If one gets profit, one uses for Krishna. If one gets loss, one gets mental or physical miseries, then these miseries, miseries are also very important. Miseries purify the heart. And uh, as we discussed, it brings one to the platform of spiritual knowledge, brings detachment from this material world. So miseries are also important for purification of heart. Lust and greed goes away in the miseries. So thus, one should understand what is the purpose of this life. The purpose of this life is getting liberation from this material entanglement. So if you get profit, you use for Krishna. If you get loss, if there is any physical mental misery, that is anyway purification. So why a person should take anxiety for profit and loss? That is Krishna's intention here. So remain satisfied with the gains which come of its own accord as per destiny. And Vimatsaraha, our transcendentalist is free from Matsaraha, means enviousness. Today whole society is based on enviousness. And that is what results in competition. Suppose there is only one bread left in the house and uh, two brothers, they want to have it. Will they fight for it? If there is actually love between the brothers, one would sacrifice. Oh, you please take. I am not hungry. You please have it. If the child wants to be fed and mother is also hungry, mother will choose to remain hungry to satiate the hunger of the child because mother is not envious of the child. So thus there is no competition, no fight for resources when there is love. But now our heart burns if our friends or relatives, they advance more than us. So just to maintain this status quo in the society, there is so much of pressure. Mainly pressure, stress and anxiety is only because of this enviousness. Others are progressing more than me. I also have to work hard. I am not able to produce result. If you really love them, you should try to let them perform better than you. But no, there is no love. There is envy. <clears throat> so a pure devotee, a transcendentalist, he is free from envy. Sama Siddhava Siddhavcha. Thus he is equipoised in success and failure. So he does not get disturbed. Others have gone more than me. I have failed. No. They are all part and parcels of Krishna. If they are happy, I am satisfied. Gata Sangasya Muktasya Jnana Vasthita Chetasaha Yajnaya Charataha Karma Samagram Praviliyate The work of a man who is unattached to the modes of material nature and who is fully situated in transcendental knowledge merges entirely into transcendence. Brahmarpanam Brahmahavir Brahmagnau Brahmanahutam Brahmaevatena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. Here Krishna is giving the sum and substance of Krishna consciousness. Brahmarpanam Brahmahavir Brahmagnav Brahmanahutam So Krishna has explained work should be done only for sacrifice. When you sacrifice there is ahuti, there is offering, there is havihi, uh, there is butter to be offered, there is agnav, agni, fire in which the offering has to be made. So when a person is always absorbed in Krishna, Brahma Karma Samadhina. Samadhi means when the consciousness is completely fixed. When a person is completely Krishna conscious, then all his activities, his object of offering and the result of that yajna, everything is completely spiritual. This kind of yajna is expected of Arjuna. Man Maya Ma Mupashrita. When a person has taken shelter of Krishna, is absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, then any action that he does and uh, the result of that activity, the performer of that activity, 
everything is brahm everything is completely spiritual but if a person is not completely absorbed in krishna then even though he may do yagya his result may not be spiritual and what is that krishna explains daivam eva pare yagyam yoginah paryupasate brahmagnav pare yagyam yagye naivopajuhvati some yogis perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them and some of them offer sacrifices in the fire of the supreme brahm now various kinds of yagyas krishna has established you should do work only for yagya only for sacrifice and there are various kinds of sacrifices mentioned as per the desires and the capacity of the individual living entities some of them some yogis they offer the yagya to the devatas demigods others offer yagya in the supreme brahm so here the worshipper of demigods and the impersonalists are explained offering yourself in the fire of supreme brahm means a person loses his identity that is the aim of the impersonalist he does not want to exist anymore he just wants to merge into the total existence brahma jyoti so brahm is considered the fire and individual identity is considered the offering one loses one's individual identity one does not lose actually but one remains there as a small particle of atom but the sensual activities are stopped so in that sense it is losing one's identity श्रोत्रादीनीन्द्रियाण्यन्ये संयमाग्निषु जुह्वति शब्दादीन विषयानन्या इन्द्रियाग्निषु जुह्वति सम ऑफ देम सैक्रिफाइस द हियरिंग प्रोसेस इन द सेंसेस इन द फायर ऑफ कंट्रोल माइंड एंड अदर सैक्रिफाइस द ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ द सेंसेस सच एज द साउंड इन द फायर ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस सो श्रवणम कीर्तनम द प्रोसेस इज एक्सप्लेन्ड हियर if one hears the vedic mantras very nicely this is also sacrifice uh, you could have heard so many things your attention could have gone to so many places but this is called sacrifice similarly you could have spoken so many things produce so many results but when you chant the names of god this is also considered sacrifice sacrifice of sound sacrifice of hearing these are various yagyas सर्वाण्रियकर्माण प्राणकर्मा चापरे आत्मसंयमोगाग्न जुह्वती ज्ञान दीपिते दोज हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ माइंड एंड सेंस कंट्रोल ऑफर द फंक्शंस ऑफ ऑल द सेंसेस एज वेल एज द वाइटल फोर्स ब्रेथ एज ऑब्लेशन इन टू द फायर ऑफ द कंट्रोल माइंड सो हियर the yoga system of patanjali is explained how all the sensual activities are stopped and a person tries to merge in the form of the supreme personality of godhead dravya yagya stapo yagya yoga yagya statha pare swadhyaya gyan yagya cha देर आर अदर्स हु एनलाइटेंड बाय सैक्रीफाइजिंग देयर मटीरियल पोजेशन इन सीवियर ऑस्टेरिटीज एक स्ट्रिक्ट वाउस एंड प्रैक्टिस द योग ऑफ एट फोल्ड मिस्टिसिजम एंड अदर्स स्टडी द वेदास फॉर द एडवांसमेंट ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज द्रव्य यज्ञ योग यज्ञ स्वाध्याय यज्ञ तपो यज्ञ वेरियस यज्ञ आर एक्सप्लेन हियर द्रव यज्ञ मीन्स जनरल चैरिटेबल एक्टिविटीज ओपनिंग एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूट स्कूल्स हॉस्पिटल्स डॉर्मेटरीज और ऑफरिंग द पोजेशन इन द ऑल्टर ऑफ फायर सैक्रीफाइस ऑफरिंग ऑफ मटीरियल पोजेशन इज कॉल्ड द्रव यज्ञ द्रव्य मीन्स मटीरियल सब्सटेंस रिच इज ऑपुलेंस वेल्थ देन देर इज तपो यज्ञ सम पीपल take voluntarily hardships austerities like following chaturmasya when it rains in the four months many people it is recommended in the vedas that they, you should not shave and many people follow it they just don't use their hands for eating 
they take food directly from the floor and don't eat anything for sense gratification and many strict vows penances they take for promotion to heavenly planets there are others who are doing swadhyaya yagya who are engaged in studying of the scriptures that is also yagya sacrifice so like this there are various kinds of sacrifices अपने जुहवती प्राण प्राणे पान तथा परे प्राणापान गतिरुद्वा प्राणायाम पाण अपरे नियताहारा प्राणा प्राणेशु जुहवती एंड देर आर इवन अदर्स हु आर इंक्लाइंड टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ ब्रेथ रेस्ट्रेंट टू रिमेन इन ट्रांस एंड द प्रैक्टिस स्टॉपिंग the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming and incoming breath into the outgoing and thus at last remain in trance stopping all breathing some of them curtailing the eating process offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice so here the pranayam process is recommended which is done in the beginning of hatha yoga ashtanga yoga सर्वेप्येते यज्ञविदो यज्ञक्षपितकल्मशा यज्ञशिष्टामृतभुजो यांति ब्रह्म सनातनम ऑल दीज परफॉर्मर्स नो द मीनिंग ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस बिकम क्लेंस्ड ऑफ सिनफुल रिएक्शन एंड हैविंग टेस्टेड द नेक्टर ऑफ द रेमनेंट्स ऑफ सच सैक्रिफाइस दे गो टू द सुप्रीम इटर्नल एटमोस्फियर the very important word used here is yagya vido one who knows the meaning of the sacrifice then they go to eternal atmosphere so if one is doing any kind of activity without knowing the meaning behind it it will not fetch the desired result so thus the knowledge is very very important even a person who is doing ashtang yoga although it is not recommended for kali yoga but lord kapil explains swadhyay is very important element one must have knowledge in knowledge when a person does yagya one who knows the meaning behind all these sacrifices he will go to eternal atmosphere others they have to wait unless they come to platform of knowledge nayam lokosti ayagyasya kutonya kuru sattama o best of the kuru dynasty without sacrifice one can never live happily on this planet or in this life what then of the next so when we become perplexed why we are not happy for health we are looking back to the vedas now we should look back to the vedas for the reason of happiness also we are opening centers of excellence in top institutes of our country for happiness happiness is a subject being introduced in schools people want to figure out how to become happy krishna has explained here very simple one who does not do sacrifice he cannot be happy in this life or next sacrifice is must for happiness evam bahu vidha yagya vitata brahmano mukhe karma jan vidhitan sarvan evam gyatva vimokshase all these different types of sacrifices are approved by the vedas and all of them are born of different types of work knowing them as such you will become liberated shreyan dravya maya yagya jnana yagya parantapa sarvam karma khilam partha jnane parisamapyate the chastiser of the enemy the sacrifice of knowledge is greater than the sacrifice of material possessions for son of pritha after all the sacrifice of work culminates in transcendental knowledge so here it is very uh, clear krishna is telling many people are enamored by the gorgeous vedic ceremonies oh yes today i participated in yagya it was beautiful chanting of so many mantras and people were putting so many things into fire and it was divine but much more divine than that is krishna is telling very clearly here 
ज्ञान यज्ञ परंतप श्रेयान बेटर देन द्रव्य यज्ञ सैक्रीफाइजिंग द मटीरियल पोजिशंस ऑन द ऑल्टर ऑफ फायर इज ज्ञान यज्ञ सैक्रीफाइज फॉर कल्टिवेटिंग नॉलेज दस दिस भगवद गीता विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग हियर इट इज मोर मच मोर पावरफुल यज्ञ इन टर्म्स ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा सो सो मेनी यज्ञ वी कैन सेट इन बट हुज लाइफ इज चेंज बाय सेटिंग इन सच यज्ञ बट इफ यू हियर सिंसियरली द मैसेज ऑफ गॉड इन भगवद गीता भागवता मेन द स्क्रिप्चर्स देन आर लाइफ चेंज इज फॉर गुड सो ऑल द सैक्रीफाइज ऑफ मटीरियल पोजिशन चैरिटी एंड ऑल Ultimately leads one to, or if properly done, should lead one to the platform of knowledge. So please do not underestimate the reading of scriptures and discussion as ordinary thing. It is a yagya and more powerful yagya. The result of all sacrifices to reach platform of knowledge. Tadvidhi pranipate na. परिप्रश्ने न सेवया उपदेक्ष्य ते ज्ञान ज्ञानी न जस्ट ट्राई टू लर्न द ट्रूथ बाय अप्रोचिंग अ स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इंक्वायर फ्रॉम हिम सबमिसिवली एंड रेंडर सर्विस अन टू हिम द सेल्फ रियलाइज सोल कैन इम्पार्ट नॉलेज अन टू यू बिकॉज ही हैज सीन द ट्रूथ This is very, very important verse. Krishna has told, "Sacrifice of knowledge is better than that of material possessions." Now, sacrifice of knowledge. Please don't get confused. I have to sacrifice, give up my knowledge. No, sacrifice of knowledge means sacrifice done to get knowledge. So, sacrifice done to get knowledge. one can get knowledge either by hearing or by reading or by discussing all these are sacrifices of knowledge it is greater than sacrifice of giving up your wealth and how does a person get this knowledge i will get this knowledge simply by uh, reading or any formal procedure has to be followed so here three step formula is given so please do not think simply by reading one will understand this For this, one needs to approach Tatvadarshi, and how one has to approach Tatvadarshi? Tadvidhi to know the science of absolute truth. One has to first of all be very very humble. Prani paate na, prakrshte rupe na nipat. That means when a person falls like rod before spiritual master, this is the symbolic representation of being humble. that i am completely surrendered whatever you tell i will follow so this humility is required some people they challenge the spiritual master that is not the way here so humility lord jesus also told kingdom of god is meant for meek and humble so one has to be very very humble and sevaya one has to render service if we approach a saintly person first inquiry should not be directly any spiritual question first inquiry ideally should be how can i render service to you sevaya this was the etiquette whenever even a king would come to meet the sages first he will ask for any person can you please tell me how can i serve you please engage me in your service and do seva and by doing seva we become qualified to receive and assimilate that knowledge otherwise even if the transcendental knowledge is spoken without seva we will not be able to digest or realize understand that so seva is very very important it is told ata shri krishna naam adi na bhavet grahayam indriyaye shri krishna naam adi the name form qualities of lord krishna are divyam transcendental na grahayam indriyaye by our senses by our mind by our mind we can neither see hear nor can understand about krishna sevan mukhe hi jivvadav but if a person engages in service of krishna which begins with tongue chanting his names uh, speaking his signs then Swayam Ev Surat Tyadha Lord Himself becomes so pleased that He manifests His knowledge, His form, and a person is able to see, hear, and understand Krishna. So seva is very important. So every word has to be noted very, very carefully, scrutinizingly. Prani Paten Pari Prashnen Seva Ya Chapter Four Verse Number Thirty Four. Please mark it very carefully. In this way, we will be able to understand Bhagavad Gita. We should approach 
a guru a person who knows this knowledge and be very very humble and we have to render service and then we don't just have to always remain humble and keep on rendering service without any inquiry ultimately we have to we approach guru to get knowledge so pari prashnena inquiry is also important one should be eager to understand knowledge but in eagerness one should not ask absurd questions one should not become impudent and one should not uh, try to simply ask without doing any seva no so blind faith is not recommended pari prashnena is very important some people tell no uh, scriptures are dogmatic they are not at all dogmatic here you see pari prashnena inquiry this word is used again after speaking entire bhagavad gita to arjuna krishna will tell vimrishya tad asheshena you completely deliberate upon it what message i spoken to you and then yate chasi tata kuru then whatever you desire you do so spiritual life is not a brainwash it is not a dogma in actual spiritual life you are encouraged to ask questions just like arjuna is asking here and krishna is replying rather all the vedic knowledge is basically the discussion between the spiritual master and disciple in different time in different places different planets different circumstances it's all discussion so inquiry is very important blind faith and absurd inquiries both are rejected here one should inquire and one should render service be humble then if a person follows three steps of submission seva and inquiry then tatva darshina those who have seen the truth they will reveal this knowledge to you so please try to follow these three steps yajgyatva na punarmoham एवं यास्यसि पांडवा ये न भूतान्यशेषाणी द्रक्ष्यस्यात्मन्यथो मै सो व्हाट इज दिस नॉलेज व्हिच तत्वदर्शी विल गिव एंड व्हेन यू हैव लर्न्ड दस लर्न द ट्रुथ यू विल नो दैट ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स आर बट पार्ट ऑफ मी एंड दैट दे आर इन मी एंड आर माइन yaj gyatva na punar moham if a person gets this knowledge then he cannot fall back into illusion what is that knowledge when we understand drakshyasi atmani athomai all the living entities are situated on krishna they are always connected to krishna and are uh, krishna tells athomai and are mine they belong to me so one should have this knowledge of spiritual life just understanding i am not the body is not sufficient one should understand that we are all part and parcels of krishna this is very important leaf is part and parcel of tree if a leaf demands direct water can the leaf ever be nourished no so practically we have to apply in our life instead of planning our direct enjoyment we should plan how to make krishna happy and then we will see we are happy and the people who are connected to us they are also happy so this is the relationship between us and krishna we are part and parcel of krishna we are situated on the energy of krishna and we are always connected to krishna in illusion i am thinking god does not exist or god is separate i am separate just like a leaf is always connected to the tree leaf is part and parcel of tree in a similar fashion we are part and parcel of krishna when has to come to this knowledge अभी चेदसी पापेभ्य सर्वेभ्य पापकृत्तम सर्व ज्ञान प्लव नजिन सतरिष्यसी इवन इफ यू आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी द मोस्ट सिंफुल ऑफ ऑल सिनर्स वेन यू आर सिचुएटेड इन द बोट ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज यू विल बी एबल टू क्रॉस ओवर द ओशन ऑफ मिजरीज सो वेन अ पर्सन हैज नॉलेज देन यू कैन सॉल्व मिजरीज ऑफ लाइफ if we do not have knowledge we can understand if we do not know science dog does not study science his ancestors were suffering from the same problem from which he is suffering today he cannot make a house dwelling for himself he cannot make a kitchen for cooking for himself but we can do because we know the sciences but unless we understand science of god there won't be perfect solution of problems of life we'll be shifting problem or creating more problems so knowledge is important when we have transcendental knowledge this knowledge that all the living entities are parts and parcels of god when we realize all miseries are solved 
यथयधांसी संसिधोग्निर्भस्म सात्कुतेर्जुन ज्ञानाग्निसर्वकर्मा भस्म सात्कुते तथा एज द ब्लेजिंग फायर टर्न्स फायर वुड टू एशेज अर्जुन सो डज द फायर ऑफ नॉलेज बर्न टू एशेज ऑल रिएक्शंस टू मटीरियल एक्टिविटीज नहीं ज्ञान सदृश पवित्र इह विद्य तत्स्वयं योग संसिद्ध काले नात्मतीती इन दिस वर्ल्ड देर इज नथिंग सो सब्लाइम एंड प्योर एस ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज सच नॉलेज इज द मेच्योर फ्रूट ऑफ ऑल मिस्टिसिजम एंड वन वेज अचीव दिस एंजॉय द सेल्फ विद इन हिमसेल्फ इन ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ टाइम एज यू वेक अप फ्रॉम अ ड्रीम All the problems of dream are immediately resolved. Thus, by this transcendental knowledge, which is revealed by spiritual master from within the heart, then immediately we understand I am not the body. Then no problems of body affect me. And if I am able to revive my relationship with Krishna, as one thinks of one's beloved heart is full of happiness, when the relationship with Krishna, its memory is revived, one is always rejoicing. love of god within himself this situation is explained in this verse shraddhavan labhate gyanam tat paras sanyatendriyah gyanam labha param shantim achirena digachati a faithful man who is absorbed in transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace so here the word used here very important the first word is shraddhavan a person who is faithful he only gets knowledge how by controlling the senses who is absorbed in transcendental knowledge he attains supreme spiritual peace so sense control is very important all these various yagyas which are described here all are meant to control yagya control the senses control the senses and hear about krishna control the senses speak about krishna control senses and offer the resources for sense enjoyment in charity control your senses and cultivate knowledge control your senses hold your breath sit in one place stop all the activities of sense enjoyment so all the yagyas are meant for sense control so a person who is faithful in the scriptures who controls the senses he very quickly is able to attain peace but one who is not faithful his destiny is very dark that krishna explains here agyascha shraddha dhanascha sanshayatma vinashyati nayam loko stina paro na sukham sanshayatmanah but ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain god consciousness for the doubting soul there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next so krishna is telling agyaha those who are ignorant because of ignorance we have doubt if a person is sick he will always be doubtful about the taste of food because everything is bitter for a sick man so in a similar fashion those who are sick all of us with bodily concept of life thinking i am this body we are always doubtful about the existence of spirit existence of supreme spirit we are doubtful about so many things because of this disease of bodily concept so those who always remain doubtful krishna is telling nayam loko nasti paro na sukham for him there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next such a person always lives in misery person is telling come sit on this bus i will rescue you from this danger no you will kidnap me you will take my money what will happen if a person doubts on a genuine person who is willing to rescue then what can be done so krishna is god he is going to rescue us giving all happiness but if we doubt on this knowledge then krishna tells now we will suffer all the laws of nature are mentioned if we doubt we don't follow we'll suffer now and in the future also we will suffer so krishna tells how to then come out of this doubt that solution also krishna is giving yoga sanyasta karmanam gyana sanchinna sanshayam atmavantam na karmani nibadnanti dhananjaya 
Therefore, one who has renounced the fruits of his action, whose doubts are destroyed by transcendental knowledge, and who is situated firmly in the self, is not bound by works, O conqueror of the riches. Tasma dagyan sambhutam ritstham gyana sinatmanaha chitvainam sanshayam yogam atishto tishta bharata. Therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Armed with yoga, O Bharat, stand and fight. So, doubts can be destroyed by transcendental knowledge. And how to get transcendental knowledge? Verse number 34. Pranipaten pariprashnena sevaya. As if we have doubts, uh, doubts are natural. If we try to study any subject, we approach a teacher to solve doubts, isn't it? When it's beyond our capacity to understand. So we have to approach a teacher. So doubts are natural. Any subject we study, we get doubts. And how do we come out of it? We approach a teacher. In a similar fashion, unless we are eager to approach a teacher, then doubts will always remain. So in order to come out of this doubt and solve the miseries of this life and the next, it is important that we approach a teacher. And if we are very very eager, Krishna will guide from the heart. Krishna will guide us if you want to become atheist. And if you want to understand, it makes some sense. Let me try to understand is more. This little Shraddha if we have. And if you develop eagerness, let me find an expert spiritual master who can guide me. Then Krishna will guide from the heart. But one should be sincere without any material motive to get spiritual knowledge. Then Krishna will guide to right spiritual master. And then we have to follow simple rules and regulations. If a person is sick, in order to come out of doubt about the taste of food, one has to follow the advice of doctor. Then he can taste food. Oh, this is sour, this is sweet, this is tasty, this is not cooked nicely. Then he can tell the exact taste of the dishes. Similarly, when we follow the instructions of spiritual master and engage in service of Krishna. So engaging in service, as it is mentioned here in this verse, taking shelter of Krishna and chanting the names of Krishna. By this, faith is established. Krishna reveals himself, doubts are destroyed. So one should learn the art of serving Krishna and chanting his names under the guidance of spiritual master. Then, when a person is not having any doubts, a person is on the liberated platform. Then even though a person is acting like a warrior, as Arjuna is supposed to do, he will not be entangled in karma. So the conclusion of this chapter is, we are all entangled here in this material world because of the tendency to act. The same tendency to act can make us liberated from all the entanglement of activities. Example given is just like if one is suffering from intake of excess milk, then the same milk taken in another transformation of curd or yogurt can help one relieve the indigestion caused by milk only. So milk only taken in another format removes the sufferings created by the milk. So the actions only directed by the spiritual master can help one get relief from the material actions done in the past life or in this life. And this scientific way of performing actions under guidance of spiritual master for the pleasure of Krishna are called Yajna. So Arjuna is told, don't think by not acting you will become free from karma, but you have to act for yajna, for sacrifice, for the pleasure of Krishna, then same actions will become your cause of liberation. Actions bind us, actions liberate us. So one has to know this science very nicely. What is action which is meant for liberation? A karma. What is vikarma? Acting against spiritual injunctions. What is karma? Fruitive activities. So this is very beautifully explained by Lord Krishna here. So the aim is ultimately to be established in a karma. Do the actions which do not bring any material reactions. So this description again seems to be confusing Arjuna and he puts forth another question for more clarity. And what is that? We will see in the next chapter. Thank you so much for hearing. Hare Krishna.